Hello, today I'm going to do a paper 2019 from AQA. Um, as I was requested online, you all can see, I think there's a message, I'm not sure if you can see it, but someone requested me to walk through the papers and I'm doing 2019 to start with. But I'll do one question at a time and I just upload as I go along, okay? So it says, figure one shows an incomplete bone harvest cycle for the formation of cesium iodide. The diagram is not to scale. So what you have to say, table one gives values to some standard entropy changes here, okay? Complete figure one by writing the formulas, including state symbols of the appropriate species on each of the two blank lines. Now, you have to know the definitions and you have to know the equations for each definitions. So the definitions you need to know here is, first of all, it starts here at zero. This is a line. When it goes down, this is entropy change of formation. So you need to know the entropy change of formation, which is entropy change when one molar compound is formed from its elements in their standard state and their standard conditions. So that means that because this cesium iodide is made from elements for under standard state and standard conditions. So the first thing you do is put cesium, which is a solid, yeah, plus iodine, which is a solid. But because there's only one iodine there, you've got to half it because you only can do one mole in there. So that's the entropy change of formation of cesium plus iodine making cesium iodide. So you need to know this equation, how to write these equations. Then if you go from here to here, you'll see that cesium solid changed to gas. So that's atomization of cesium happening there. So that's atomization of cesium. And then for the next one, what happened? You got atomization of iodine. Atomization of iodine. So the next bit here is the first ionization energy of cesium or ionization energy of cesium. So cesium goes from cesium gas to cesium uh, plus one gas plus electron. Yeah. So then what you do, you will keep that one there plus iodine gas there, maintain that because that doesn't change. Then you got the first electron affinity. So that's electron affinity of iodine. So electron affinity of iodine is iodine gas goes to plus electron goes to iodine minus gas. So that's what's happening here. It becomes iodine minus gas. So you added that plus that, it gives you that. And then cesium stays the same. Does it make sense to, that, the way I'm explaining? So your cycle is completed. Okay. So that's the first thing you got to do, but you have to learn every single equation, every single um, uh, equation for each each of the definitions okay what you're going to do is that use this for uh, this uses values here to work out um the data to calculate the standard entropy change of atomization of iodine so always start with delta h formation okay so delta h formation equals to delta h atomization of cesium plus delta h atomization of iodine plus delta H, first ionization energy, ionization energy of cesium, plus delta H, um, electron affinity of iodine, plus delta H, lattice enthalpy. Okay? So if you know this is always you start, then you can rearrange what your norms in there. So how you got here, looking the, the, the look in this uh, table, you look at interchange formation is minus 3, Seven equals to atomization of cesium is plus 79. Then you got atomization of iodine, which is what you need to know. Okay, so that's your unknown. Plus uh, ionization uh, energy of cesium is plus 376. Plus electron affinity, which is minus 314. Then you got plus lattice. Um, yeah, we got that. Then we got plus lattice enthalpy, which is minus 585. You rearrange all that to find that, okay? So what you do, you put minus 337, minus 79, minus 376. What you're doing, you're passing through everything to the other side. Plus 314, so you change the signal, the sign. Plus 585 equals to delta H atomization of iodine. So if you do this calculation, delta H atomization of iodine, you end up with the value of uh, 107 kilojoules per mole minus one. Okay, that's how you do any question about bone half cycle. Now, the next question is the entropy change of lattice, an entropy of lattice formation of cesium iodide in table one is a value obtained 
by experiment. The value obtained by calculation using the perfect ionic model is minus 582. So deduce why what these values indicate about the bonding of cesium iodide. So that means that all bondings, all the bonds in cesium iodide are purely ionic. All bonds, all bonding are purely ionic that means there's no they all are perfect structure so there's no movement and there's no covalent character at all in there okay right next one we're going to do <coughs> we're going to do this bit here it says here use data table 2 to show this reaction not feasible so for reaction not to be feasible delta g has to be um, greater or equal to zero okay so let's work out first s so you work out delta s which is products minus reactants okay um so you got um uh, let me just check what i've done here so, so you got delta s equals to 82.8 which is your product there plus half of iodine which is that one there one one seven okay all that that's your products minus your reactants which is this bit here which is that one there minus 130. So you work out delta S. So if you will go through the delta S, you will notice that you end up with uh, 11.3 joules Kelvin minus one mole minus one. Okay. We need to change this for, I need to change this divide by a thousand to, to get into kilojoules because we're going to, we need to work on kilojoules or you change that for joules or you change this for kilojoules. So that's going to be 11.3 times 10 minus three kilojoules per mole kilojoules per mole minus one okay <clears throat> so um the next stage is you've got delta g um so delta g is right delta g is delta h minus t delta s okay so this is the Gibbs free energy reaction. So when delta G is bigger or equals to zero, the reaction is not feasible. When it's less than zero, it is feasible. So we need to work out delta G. So delta H, you got a value there, plus 337 minus, temperature is 298 Kelvin times delta S, we just worked out to be 11.3 times 10 minus three, okay? So that gives you delta G as, 333.6 kilojoules per mole minus one therefore delta g is 334 as uh, three six figures okay kilojoules per mole minus one because delta g is positive reaction is not feasible and that's it that's how you do that question i hope that was helpful to you so that's question one done so i'm going to upload this in a minute and then i'll move on to question two